guys, this is Ryan Van Puderoin. I am the drummer from the Devin Townsend Project. Um, here today to talk to you about different approaches with live drumming, studio drumming, stuff like that, because uh, you know every drummer has a different approach when it comes to that. And uh, you know, there's a, a lot of examples of people who, um, let's say, are in the metal music industry, and uh, you know they feel that in order to play metal or in order to be an amazing metal drummer that it's all about speed it's all about how crazy you can play how fast you can play and all that and i think it's definitely an important thing to have when you're doing it but i think to be a, a versatile player and well-rounded in many styles of music is just as important as focusing on just being fast or whatnot and i think a lot more drummers need to have that approach you need to go in, you need to believe in yourself, you need to show what you're capable of in your own style. Drumming is not a competition, and a lot of people uh, unfortunately get caught up in that. And that's how it should be. Don't focus on trying to be better or faster or whatever. Focus on trying to be the best drummer you can and play for the song. And uh, it's really important to take that approach in drumming or any instrument that you play in music and uh, I, I think it's overlooked too much you're too worried about playing fast as opposed to maybe playing what's right for the song it doesn't have to be fast drumming is a whole spectrum of things try and learn it all don't be competitive and you'll be uh, really happy with your end results most importantly Believe in yourself. Create your own style. If you have influences, one thing I tell all my drum students is always, always, always take from different drummers, learn from different drummers, make it your own. It's the most important thing. If uh, John Bonham was your drumming hero, sure, take from him. Don't try to be John Bonham. Be yourself. It's a super important thing, and I've always tried to apply that to my drumming throughout my career. And uh, I think it's some great advice for up and coming drummers and even professionals out there. I think they tell you the exact same thing and it's not brought up enough. Um, next, I'd like to talk about how I warm up. Lots of guys, they practice their rudiments. You know, they have their uh, practice pad. Some, some guys have kick pads and stuff. You see lots of videos where guys are just running through a whole bunch of random uh, rudiments and stuff and blistering through it and all that. I kind of approach it differently. I like to warm up with the practice pad. I don't have a kick drum pad. I just use my feet on the floor. What I like to do is play stuff that I know I'm going to be playing in the set. So uh, I get my muscle memory, which we all have. That's what drumming's all about. I get it going early. When it comes to those parts, it's like I, I don't even think about it. Um, one of the things that I like to do is just matching my feet with, with my hands, single stroke, simple stuff, okay? But incorporating triplets into it, going into a triplet beat, I teach this lesson to my students a lot of the time. And I warm up with this all the time because we use it a lot in the Devin Townsend project. And the whole point of me showing you this is this is just what I do. But what I would suggest for you guys is take stuff from your set, maybe the stuff that's more difficult for you. Warm up with it. It's always a great idea to use stuff that you use in your set to warm up with because uh, it just helps you when you get on stage. So for me, we deal with tons of 16th notes and uh, we have some triplet bass grooves and stuff like that that are constant based off 16th notes. So all I'll do, start nice and slow. I'll be like. Then I'll add uh, triplets, accented triplets. Again, go on the triplet beat. And back to sixteenths, over and over. I have a, a little click track with me, metronome that I keep with me. I practice these rudiments. Usually start it like at 100, slow actually for something like that. Jump it up by 10 BPM every time. Another thing I like to talk about is um, patience with drumming. And uh, I'm gonna incorporate some of the exercises I did uh, as examples as well. 
going back again to the album Deconstruction, that was a, a real turning point for me playing with Devin Townsend Project. Um, there's some songs on that record where there was required blast beats that we were going to play live from the songs that uh, Dirk recorded. And I had to learn basically how to blast all my life. I didn't really care much for learning how to blast or, or wanting to play that style of music. And, uh, you know, at the age of uh, 39, I, I had to learn it. Now, the, the biggest thing that I teach my drum students is you got to have patience when you learn anything new. It's super important to have that because if you just jump to the faster speeds and think you're going to master everything by doing that, it's not going to work that way. For example, with the blast beat at Dirk Verbeeren, again, we recorded that album together and I asked him, how do you blast? You know, and I wanted to know how he did the blast beat in Jalar and all that stuff. And he showed me the technique. And the most important thing that I did was have patience in learning how to do it. Yes, you aren't going to believe this at 60 BPM. Now, a lot of you people out there are going to go, why the hell would you do it at 60 BPM? The reason I do it at 60 BPM is I want my left foot, my left hand, to be as strong as my right foot and right hand when I do it. And if you just jump to 170 and you ignore everything before it, I guarantee you, you are not going to be able to blast with great technique and, and perfectly at 250 BPM. Chances are it'll be a mess. Um, you can ask any drum teacher that and they'll tell you the same thing. So, for example, uh, Dirk, he basically showed me the technique, you know, using your fingers on, on the pad. And he said, just basically start uh, doing it at slow BPMs, which I did. So I grabbed my sticks, I'd sit there, and I'd match 60 BPM, which is even slower than that. I'd get it up to faster speeds. And I'd go through that, and then I'd start adding the feet once I got comfortable with it, and I'd be 60 BPM again. Anyways, you get it up to the, the, the faster speeds, you add your feet in there. The patience was the key for me to be able to blast, like in, I think it was even a month, I was playing Jalar and I got my speed up to do it. And uh, you know, that's in between rehearsing, being on tour, all that stuff. So, you know, I just managed to fit it in and get it done. But the key point that I'm trying to get across is take the time to, uh, to go through every speed uh, focus on your technique. You're not going to be able to catch something if you're doing 170 BPM and with wrong technique. You're going to be more focused on trying to actually do the blast beat or whatever it is you're trying to learn. So it's super important. A, start super slow, master it, speed it up. You know, I'd say 5 BPM is what I did. So I jump from 60, 65, 70, 75, so on, so on, so on. And even when you start reaching, uh, you know, 130, 140 uh, BPM, you're going to find that even jumping 5 B BPM can get fast at points because you're getting up to higher tempos. But uh, that's, that's uh, some great advice that I think all you guys could use. And uh, to this very day, I'm still working on my blast. You know, I'm, I'm no Dirk Verbeeren yet, but, uh, or Gene Hoagland or Flo Moni or all those greats. You know, but uh, time, patience, and practice will get you there. Another thing that I'd like to talk about, and this is uh, nothing to do with showing rudiments or anything like that. This is just all to do with your mind. And it's a, a really important thing for drumming. Not only drumming, anything that you do in your life. It's uh, positive thinking. And uh, I'm a very, very, very big fan of it. All uh, my fans and stuff who follow me on Twitter or Facebook or anything like that, they love it because I always give positive quotes every few days that uh, inspire people, let alone myself. Now, to get into it, I think all of us have gone through stages in our careers where um, we're, we're drumming, you can't do something, and uh, you're very frustrated with, uh, with yourself. The, the worst thing you can do is say you can't do it. If you say you can't do it, you're right. If you say you can do it, you're right. Either way, you're going to be right. So why not say you can do it? That's the approach I've taken all my life. Uh, for example, when I stepped into the Devin Townsend band gig, 
I had to, to fill in the shoes of Gene Hoagland, the, the legendary drummer Gene Hoagland. And uh, it was an intimidating spot for me to step into, but at the same time, I knew that I had to go in and do it. So was I gonna approach that as, I can't do this? No, I went in and I went in there thinking positively, believing that I would, and I did do it. And I stepped in and I did the best job I could. And more importantly, I had fun with it which is another thing all you guys got to do. So I really want to get across the point that if you believe in yourself, you visualize it, you take action, taking action is rehearsing it, playing live, whichever, and you live it, and you just solidly believe that you can do it, I guarantee you that all those goals are reachable as long as you keep on moving forward with a positive attitude. And... Uh, a lot of people might go, oh, that's hocus pocus. But you know what? The people who sit there and they're negative about it all the time, chances are they don't get a lot of stuff done in their life. And all the very famous people that I've met or some of the famous people I know, they're all very positive people. They always had goals. They always believe they can do it, and that's why they're there. And uh, I think this is a great thing that you should approach, especially when you're playing live. How many times have we screwed up live? And you're like going to drum a gig the next night and you're like oh here comes that part again that's the part that I messed up you know what don't go in thinking you're going to mess it up go in knowing that you're going to play it better go in with a positive attitude now just because you're thinking positive doesn't mean that you're going to nail it every time maybe you don't nail it again the next night but it was better and you find the positives in it you keep on going next thing you know within a couple gigs you're nailing it I've been through there I just played a huge show at uh London, the Roundhouse, sold out, uh, Retinal Circus, and about a week before that, I was having problems with certain parts with my double bass and my feet, and all I did was believe that I could do it, work on it, and granted, I did practice and work on it, but the bottom line is when that gig came, I nailed it, and it's a perfect example of uh, mind over matter, you know what I mean? Think about it, believe in it. Be positive and you'll be absolutely astounded at uh, the things you can end up doing. And if there's one thing that I can suggest to all of you up and coming drummers, the best thing is be yourself, man. That's, that's all you got to do. Just be yourself. You can have your influences. Uh, I love listening to guys like Gavin Harrison or uh, Thomas Hawk from Meshuggah. Mm -hmm. Vinnie Paul, Neil Peart were big influences. Tim Alexander from Primus, those... Those guys hugely influence me, but I don't try to sound like them. I always try to be myself. Uh, take that philosophy, have fun, practice it, click track. Uh, another thing, practice things slow, speed them up to the highest tempo you can go, find your limitations. Uh, always push yourself. But the bottom line with all that stuff is have fun. Drumming isn't a, a competitive sport or anything. Learn from other people. You see people who are better than you at something? Don't, don't be jealous. Go up, ask them how they're doing it. Anyone who comes up to me and they say, hey, what are you doing there? I'm like, oh, never mind. I tell them, you know what? We're, we're here to learn from each other. And uh, pick up as much as you can and always try to be yourself. And uh, that's what I try and do. Have a good one, guys. And thanks so much uh, for tuning in. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to be here. Enjoy. Enjoy.